the meal, Quieter 3Q. Is it a good PC for astrophotography? Well, that's what I'm hoping to find out. It runs Windows 11, so that's the big question for me, is will it work with things like ASCOM, NINA, PHD2, or even CPWI? Well, hopefully, we'll find out. There are some better unboxing videos out there, and that's really not my intention. Uh, but I did want to give you a, a look at um, what this looks like. So, let's just uh, open the plastic here. Take a look at what's inside. Quiv the Lazy Geek did a really good uh, review on the, um, the 2 version of this last year. Um, the, uh, the big difference being that um, the previous version was running the Celeron uh, J4125. Um, this is the, uh, the newer generation N5105. Uh, In um, reviews that I've looked up, I mean it's still a, a, a quad-core Celeron. It still only has four threads. Uh, it still operates uh, at the same uh, base speed of uh, 2 gigahertz, although it does have a higher uh, boost um, a boost speed of 2.9 gigahertz, I believe. Uh, however, head-to-head, uh, -head, uh, it does seem to perform about 30% faster than the uh, previous generation Celeron, which is um, what I currently have running my main astrophotography rig. Uh, I bought this mostly uh, because I've set up a, or I'm building out a new um, portable rig and I wanted to have um, something that was lightweight and fanless um, to, um, to, to take with me. Also it, it runs on a, a 12 volt power supply so anywho let's take a look at what's inside. Definitely seems nicely packed. Got a um, packing list here. Tells us that it comes with a power adapter, a bunch of different uh, regional uh, adapters, uh, a Visa mount, of course the quick start guide itself. Um, walks us through the interface on the hardware, all the different connections. Talks about how to install an internal um, uh, M2 SSD or an NVMe uh, because this uh, this comes uh, in three different configurations. Here, let's pull it out. Oh, that is nicely packed. It's a nice foam cut out there. Wow, it is actually very small. It's a lot smaller than I was expecting, honestly. Um, so you can see um, USB 3. There's a micro SD uh, slot for additional storage. Um, headphone jack two HDMI out ports. Uh, this is a USB-C connector here, but it is exclusively for power. This is how you power it from, uh, it's a DC 12 volt 2 amp. Uh, here's your gigabit ethernet port. Uh, there's the um, secure lock connector there. Oh, power button right here. And here are the other USB 3 um, ports. And got two little rubber strips on the bottom and my understanding is that you simply take off these four screws you can open it up and that'll give you access to the NVMe slot so you can put in uh, more memory uh, or even install Windows from that uh, device so that it uh, boots up faster because it, it comes um, like I said in three different configurations uh, you can get uh, with 128 um, uh, 128 gigs of, uh, of storage, 256, uh, or uh, a 512. Uh, the difference is, is that um, the, the 128 and the 256 are both using uh, eMMC um, storage, which is a little bit slower than, than SSD. The 512 version is 256 gigs of eMMC, plus they, they pre-install an NVMe drive in there. In, uh, in this case, I just got the cheapest one. I think this was about uh, $230, maybe $240 on Amazon, and that's as of when I'm recording this, which is mid-May 2022. 
Um, so I just got the, the 128 um, because I figured, you know, if I, if I needed more storage, <clears throat> you know, this is going to be connected to a network, so I can always just offload stuff to a, to a network drive, or I can just open it up and put in my own NVMe. So no reason to, uh, to pay a higher price uh, for something that I'm not sure that I need, and if I do, I can do it myself. So let's see what else is in here. Okay, actually, you know the <clears throat> the packaging, just with the little iconography and the way it's all laid out. It's actually a little bit reminiscent of opening up like a um, uh, an iPhone. Um, there's the uh, the Visa bracket that goes on the back. Here is the um, 12 volt power supply. And there's the USB-C connector. And you definitely have to attach oh, a couple of screws here. That must be for the Visa bracket. You definitely have to attach the, um, the adapter for your region. So that looks like a European one, which I won't need. Uh, this is for the US, so there we go. Click, there it is. Plug it in, and that will power it. Uh, is there anything else in here? Uh, not quite sure what that is. It almost, hmm, I wonder, does it tell me what that is? No. Oh, I see. All right, so this is um, a silicon rubber pad that if you do install your own um, NVMe that uh, they want you to put this on top of it for heat dissipation because again this is a fanless unit um, the uh, the case is actually a really nice um, uh, aluminum um, and so the case itself acts as the heat sink and so apparently if you put an NVMe in here you use this on top of that NVMe and that helps to dissipate the heat through the case so pretty cool um, so next, let's uh, get this powered on, uh, get it connected to the monitor, um, and um, we'll take a look at Windows 11. I've never actually used Windows 11 before, uh, and so I have no idea how compatible things like ASCOM, MENA, and uh, PHD2 are with Windows 11. So uh, we'll get that installed and um, see how it works. Okay, here we are at the Windows 11 desktop, and we're on the ASCOM webpage now, and we're going to go look at the instructions here for installing ASCOM. Uh, it involves uh, installing some Windows features, so I'm just going to go ahead and speed all this up so I don't bore you with it, and look at that. The ASCOM install was successful, so that is definitely promising. Uh, I really wasn't sure what to expect out of uh, Windows 11. Um, had never used it before. So now that we've got ASCOM successfully installed, let's head on over to the Celestron website and we'll download the CPWI telescope control software. I'll speed up the install of that as well. That went off without a hitch, worked perfectly. Um, I'm using the um, Celestron um, evolution mount uh, for this telescope. And so uh, we've got uh, CPWI, Start it up, seems to, to work great. So um, very impressed so far. So now let's head on over to PHD2's website and we'll install that software and see how that goes. I'm using the uh, ZWO mini guide scope and uh, ASI 120 guide camera. And so uh, as you can see here, the install of PHD2 went perfectly. I'm at the point here where it's asking me to create a uh, profile for the setup, so let's go ahead and do that. Oh, had to download some ZWO camera drivers, but uh, the uh, the profile creation, uh, doing um, the uh, the darks, all of that worked well. So uh, now we've got CTIP, CPWI as well as PHD2 running. So now let's go grab Nina. So for Nina, I do prefer using the 2.0 beta version, which is currently at RC3. Uh, it's just got so many cool features allowing you to um, plan your, your session um, with the uh, framing wizard um, and then uh, the advanced sequencing. Uh, if you haven't checked out Patriot Astro's um, uh, series of uh, videos 
on uh, various features in Nina. I highly recommend it. Patriot Astro does a great job uh, in um, making some of these um, features uh, understandable and accessible. So uh, here we are starting up Nina for the first time. Um, you know, we've got the uh, standard Windows Defender pop-up, so we'll dismiss that. Um, and at this point, I don't have a camera attached, so um, I'm actually just going to skip this for now and jump down to the telescope uh, and see if it can connect to CPWI. So uh, let's select that, hit the power button, and wow, how about that? It worked. Now, of course, Nina doesn't know anything about our location. We do have our location programmed into the telescope, so we'll do that sync from the telescope uh, to Nina to get the um, uh, local position coordinates uh, stored here, and we get our success message. Um, yeah, everything's working great so far. Super impressed. So um, let's go and connect our uh, connect our guider next. Okay, let's click on the guide, PHD2, and wow, how about that? Everything worked. So, um, uh, so far, just super impressed. Um, I did um, use a uh, laser thermometer to test the temperature of uh, the computer when I was using it. So this shot shows uh, the max temperature I recorded during Windows updates. That's 142 degrees Celsius. When I was actually using everything, like when I had CPWI running, um, PHD2, Nina, all of that running together, it actually dropped down to about 118. Um, and yes, at 142, it felt warm to the touch, but it certainly wasn't hot. Didn't feel like I was going to get burned. But uh, just know that because the case is the heat sink, that uh, it, it will feel warm to the touch. So uh, here we are. Um, we've got uh, CPWI up and running, connected. Now we're connecting uh, PHD2. Uh, so um, loading our profile there, connecting all of our devices. Now we're going to go over and start up Nina. So now I'm trying to do it as if um, uh, I'm actually using it. So I actually do have my Nikon Z6 uh, camera attached at this point. So let's go ahead and select that and connect. And sure enough, it finds it. Cool. It's successfully connected. Let's uh, connect our telescope. CPWI, we know this worked before. Yep, no problem. Awesome. Let's go down and connect our guider. PHD2. Cool. No problem. So, here I am. I'm ready to take this rig out once we get clear skies again and uh, do some astrophotography with this cool little um, computer. I mean, this thing is really about the size of something you could put into your pocket. It is... Uh, it's amazing how small it is. Okay, well, here it is. It's the uh, Mealy Quieter 3. I've got it mounted here just with a uh, Velcro strap onto the, uh, the uh, Altaz Evolution mount that I've got on a wedge. And you can see I've got the red cap back here. So everything worked. Um, I've got uh, CPWI running on there, PHD2. Uh, I've got Nina. In fact, I've got Nina opened up right here. And I'm using the telescope control so you can see it, it works just fine. And this is all going over Wi Fi. And yes, I know the mount's a little loud. And with, all, with the uh, PC mounted to the mount, like that, uh, I've got all the wiring. Um, on the mount and there's really just the power cable that uh, that comes off of it so very little uh, likelihood of any sort of cable snag so there you go I think this is going to work out great as a uh, really small inexpensive uh, astro uh, photography PC so uh, if you're interested check it out